hey guys, if you want to study effectively, you need to have a timetable. So before we start planning your timetable, you need to sit down with a pen and paper and write down a few bits of information. First of all, what time do you get home from school each day? Do you have any essentials that you can't miss? Do you have a job you need to go to? Do you have training you need to go to? Do you have any like violin, music classes, dance classes, football that you cannot miss? You need to know when these times are. You need to know when dinner is, I'm fairly sure most of you remember when dinner is, but you need to have that written down. And you need to remember or think about what TV programmes are your absolute essentials. What can you not miss? What can you, what do you think about all the time and get stressed if you miss? Then we need to start thinking about the subjects. Now I know I started this off with loads of things that aren't subjects, but these are important things to think about as well. So write down your list of subjects. Then we need to think about what ones you want to do for A-level. We need to think about your core subjects. We need to think about um, what subjects you're doing really well in, what subjects you're not doing quite so well in. All of this information needs to be important. Then we're going to need to pack a post-it notes or some torn up bits of paper. You're going to need a pen, you're going to need a big space to plan this out on. So either your desk or the floor or stick post-it notes all over the wall and then we can start planning. So I'm happy, I would like to spend um, some time with you planning timetables for you. So if you want more help, pop um, information in the comments below and mark it as a private comment so that the entire world doesn't know what you're up to. Um, I don't need to know exact details of everything. If you just say I can't do anything this afternoon, that's fine. And I will, I will plan a timetable for you. But I'm going to walk you through an example of one timetables I planned for someone in school. So the first thing you're going to need to do is to get loads of post-it notes and each post-it note is worth half an hour's worth of study. Write on the post-it notes how much study you should be doing for each subject and put them to one side. Once you've done that we can start planning our timetable. So we've got all the days of the week laid out and the times down the side. Now this is taking into account what time you get home from school. Because if you don't get home from school till six, there is absolutely no point starting your timetable at five. If you get home at four, then you can move it up. Then what we need to do is block out the days when you're busy, when you know you cannot do anything. So I'm going to use um, orange post-it notes for those and I'm going to use an example of um, a girl that I did at school. So we cannot do anything on a Monday there or a Monday there. Wednesday all night is tennis training, so we can't do anything on those times, so let's pop orange post-it notes on just to block those out. And then Tuesday at five o'clock is dinner. So those are the times that we can't do, now we can start filling in things that we can do. So pick up a post-it note, really doesn't matter what post-it note it is, and then we can start putting stuff on. So if we start with art, Another person I did this with quite liked art, found it really, really relaxing. So she wanted to do that towards the end of the day and then we do something a bit harder beforehand. So subjects that were maybe a little bit harder, thinking about that, were French. So popping a nice relaxing subject just after a subject that maybe you find a bit harder is a really good way to break things up. Now on this little gap over here, um, we're gonna put in English because sometimes there's a lot of English work, sometimes there's not a lot of English work. And sometimes she has time over here and sometimes she doesn't. So we're gonna pop English in there. Now to fill in this French here, we're gonna pop another French in here because um, Tuesdays is the day that she has French lessons. So to keep things fresh in her mind, we're going to do things straight after school. Pick up another one. Here we have computing. And at this point, you can just kind of start filling in things randomly and then see how they feel. So popping computing in there. Then we have tech. Let's do a bit of that. On Sunday, Spanish. Again, subject we maybe find a bit hard. So let's pop that first thing on a Saturday. And again, we like art, so let's follow the Spanish up with a bit more art. Science, obviously my favourite subject, we have science on a Friday, so we're going to pop that on a Friday. Tech is desperate for some attention, so we quite like tech, it's not too bad, we're going to pop it in here on a Thursday because that's the day that we have um, tech lessons. So history, a lot, a lot of writing to go with history, we're going to pop it in here 
after the French where there isn't so much writing but quite a lot of vocab to learn and then to counter the lot of writing we have in history we're going to pop maths in down there so we have lots of different skills going on in one day learning vocab essay writing and then maths questions you don't want to overload yourself with too much going on all at once so what do we have left we've got some more science left over we're just going to pop that on a sunday over here we've got some more maths we can pop that towards the end of the day over here spanish again a subject with lots of um lots of writing we're going to pop that on the sunday i don't want to have two subjects um the same on one day so saturday and sunday for the spanish re this is quite a nice subject quite an essay based subject so we're going to pop that here after the art geography we've got a nice little gap in there to pop geography and then we have some english let's pop some more english in over here and some history down there now this is what we came up with when we sat down and talked about things obviously this is going to be a trial and error it's going to be a negotiation if you do something and find that you don't like it if for example you started off with loads and loads of languages at the beginning of the week you could change it and you could get rid of all of those so this is something i actually did with someone at school um, here's a picture of what it turned out look, look, looking like a lot messier than this now i'm going to show you another example of someone who's going to be a bit later on in the school who's going to be coming up to exam time Okay, we're gonna do another example now. GCSE student taking 10 different subjects, wants to do chemistry, physics, maths at A level. So the first thing you need is a list of all your subjects and I'm gonna make one post-it note per half an hour of studying. Now for um, every single subject, I'm going to give two post-it notes, that's an hour per subject, then an extra hour for the core subjects and an extra hour for subjects you want to study at A-level. So starting at the top of the list, biology, I'm just going to put these post-it notes over to the side and then come back to them later. Biology, biology, chemistry, chemistry, and because we want to do chemistry at A-level, it gets an extra post-it note because we need good grades in chemistry if we're going to get onto the A-level course. Physics, physics, and again we want to get good grades in physics so we can get onto the A-level course. So physics gets a bonus one. Maths, maths, and because we want to do it at A-level it gets a bonus one. English literature, English literature, and because English is a core cool subject, it gets a bonus one. Um, English language, English language, and because it's a core cool subject, it gets a bonus one. Spanish. Now, I know we're using a lot of post-it notes here, but I'm afraid GCSEs um, require a lot of post-it notes. History and colour coding things is great. So lots of coloured post-it notes. History again. RE. RE. Now, if you've already done your RE, then um, you can just switch that out with something else. Do more chemistry. Arts and art again. So those are all of our post-it notes over there. This is our timetable. So I've added in um, an extra half an hour. We're going from 4.30 going home from school till 6.30 in the evening. Really, really don't study too much later than that because it's not going to do you any good. But what I am going to add in is every single night dinner and TV. Now this doesn't have to be the same time every single night. This can vary, dinner and TV, Monday through Friday. And then on Wednesday, you're gonna go and do a club or something, or read a book, or play the piano, or whatever. But your Wednesday, you're having a little bit of a break. Now, obviously, this is gonna vary from person to person. 
um, but this is just an example. So let's start filling things in. Now we have a lot of English and English is never my favourite subject. So I'm going to get that out of the way as soon as possible. First thing, rip the bandage off, do English as soon as you come in through the door. And yes, I know we are now doing English every single day of the week, but sometimes we just have to do things. So how many is that? I should have one more English somewhere. There it is. And then Saturday and Sunday, we get a bit of a rest from English. I know first thing through the door and you've got to sit down and do a load of English. If you want to change it around, that's absolutely fine. This is what I would do because honestly, it was never my favorite subject. So let's just rip the bandage off. Whereas chemistry, and maths I absolutely loved. So let's reward ourselves at the evening with a bit of chemistry and then straight after the English we can do a bit of maths. Let's pop another maths in here and to make our evening nice after we've had to do the English let's pop some physics in as well. What have we got now? RE. RE is quite a wordy subject. Let's pop it on a Sunday. Art. Again, never my favourite subject, but was quite relaxing. So let's pop it down here in the evening. And let's pop that down there in the evening as well. A bit more chemistry now. Don't want to do it on the same day that I've done chemistry. Don't want to do it on the same day I do physics. So let's pop chemistry in there. Biology, we don't have any science on this day. So let's squeeze that in there. And then some more maths. Let's pop the maths after the RE because that's quite a wordy subject on the Sunday. Um, right, history. I tend to have to write a lot of essays in history. Let's pop that there. Physics. Let's pop physics down here after history because they're quite different skills going on. Spanish. Again, a different skill to the other things we've got going on in the day. So lots of writing, lots of numbers, different languages, and then world chemistry is just awesome. So we can pop that there biology um let's start to even out our weekends over here chemistry all of these are starting to get a bit filled up so let's pop that on a sunday so it's on a different day to the biology post notes going crazy history i have a space in here so that's where i'm going to put the history ra oh they were starting to go a little bit crazy i think that long there let's pop those there RE, right, I've got space in here where I'm going to squeeze RE. Physics, let's pop that after biology, and then Spanish again down here. So each of these are half an hour slots, or rather each of these are 25 minute slots with a five minute break in. And this five minute break is so, so important. So this half an hour slots I talked about, I really do mean half an hour slots. Your mind cannot work for long periods of time. If you sit there for an hour and a half, two hours, slogging away in an English essay or a bit of chemistry work, it is not good for you. Your mind does not work like this. Your mind needs short chunks of information and there need to be different chunks of information, which is why I put different, different style subjects on the same day. Don't do English and then have a five minute break and go back and do more English or do history which needs the same type of skills. Go into a different subject, go and do something completely different like maths or science or art, something that doesn't require the same skills. Your brain will thank you. Now I know all of you are sitting there going, but I like to do my homework in one go. You will do better homework if you split it over days, I promise you. Because the second time you come and look at it, your brain will be refreshed, you'll notice things you didn't notice the first time round, and you'll make improvements and it will be better homework. Now, I've put you down for doing about two hours worth of revision a day. Now, I think this is, what, this is what I think you should be doing. And if your teacher doesn't set you explicit bits of homework, then use the initiative. Do some revision. Make flashcards. Find the past paper. If you don't have anything that needs to be handed in in that two hour, in that time slot, that you've got scheduled for history or Russian or English, then find something yourself and do it. Watch some YouTube videos, find some past papers. That time is scheduled for something. Use that time for that subject. Now, at the weekends, we've got a little bit more flexibility. You don't have to do it in the evenings. You can spread your half hours, your 25 minutes out a lot more. 
if you want to. You can spread them, do a couple in the morning, a couple in the afternoon, and have breaks. I've put them into half an hour slots, but what I really mean is 25 minutes and a five minute break. And I do not mean a five minute break where you sit in the same place and get your phone out. Get up, off, out of the chair, and walk around. Do something physical. Go make someone a cup of tea. I know, I would love it if someone just brought me randomly a cup of tea and said, there you go. I'm very, very sure somebody at home would like you to empty the dishwasher for them. Now, I know this doesn't sound like much fun, but it has some advantages. You're being nice, which is always good. It is brainless. You do not have to think about it too much, which is giving your brain a break from studying. So when you go back and do more studying, you're going to be refreshed. It's active. It's getting you up, moving. It's getting you out of your seats. This is really, really good. Just sitting there looking at your phone is not good. And please, please just put your phones away while you're studying. You can spend the entire summer on Facebook and Snapchat. Just not now, okay? We don't have long left. Um, right, so that is a study timetable for while you're still at school. Later on, um, once you start to go on study leave, revision leave, exam leave, I will do you um, a timetable for what your day should be looking like during study leave. If you wanted to add in an extra half an hour, an extra hour slot at the weekends for the subjects that maybe you weren't doing quite so well in, or the subjects that you really wanted to do at A-level, then that's great, but don't overburden yourself. At this stage, you should be doing about two hours during the week, split up into half an hour slots, and then four or five hours at the weekend. And you don't have to do that much. If you just want to do two hours at the weekend, that's fine. But we do need to think about ramping it up a bit more when we get closer to the exams. Okay, guys, I hope that was helpful for you. If any of you want help with this, just leave me a message down below. Leave me the information that um, I need to do with timetable and I'll work one up for you. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I really hope you found this video helpful. If you want to say thank you, or if you want access to my online classroom priority video requests, or to see all the books I'm publishing, you can pop over to Connors or keep up to date with everything on my website. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. And if you follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook, you'll get all the updates there. Thanks for watching guys. I really hope you found this helpful anything else you need, any other help you need, just let me know below.